Coaches, if you're looking for another quick game process to add to your playbook, check out this video. We're talking about the slant flat concept, others known as just simply slant. We're getting into it, breaking it down right now. What's up, coaches? Welcome back to another video. This is Coach Ross, Coach Ross Football. Welcome to the channel. If you've never been here before on this channel, we talk about offensive football, anything and everything spread offense that we can. We also talk about other concepts within the spread offense, whether you're talking about the air raid, the run and shoot, talking about passing schemes, running schemes, blocking techniques, playbooks, practice scripts, anything and everything about offensive football you can find on this channel. So that's something you're interested in. Make sure you hit the subscribe uh, button down below. Also, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. In this video, I can't believe I haven't covered it before in some of my previous videos. I'm a big, huge component of the quick game. In fact, when I call offenses, I would say probably 70% of the plays that I call are typically out of the quick game section of the playbook. So I'm really, really shocked. I haven't talked about this concept yet, but it's called slant flat. That's what I call it. Other coaches, especially area coaches, just call it simply slants. This is a type of concept that it can be really ran and taught in any type of offense, whether you're air raid, whether you're just simply the run and shoot, wing T, uh, flex mode, all these types of uh, offenses can run this type of quick game process. You can add it to your playbook, and it's really, really easy to teach. You can add a bunch of tags. So I'm going to go over all of that stuff in this video. Like I said, I'm a huge component of the quick game. I'm talking about a quick game like stick. That's my favorite play to run. Um, is stick. I love it. I can do so many different things with it. In fact, if you haven't seen my other video, I show you a different ways to uh, disguise the stick concept. So if you want to check that out, make sure you check it out right here. Um, also, corner or Y corner, as some people call it, fade out. Those are three of my favorite quick game processes to use. However, slant flat is a very, very easy concept to teach and establish into your playbook. So if it's something that you're interested in or something that you're looking forward to adding, I highly recommend checking this uh, concept out and giving it a try because it's very easy to teach. Not only can you also run this type of concept in a variety of different offenses, and a lot of offenses do use it, but I feel like this is one of those concepts where you can teach to all different levels, whether you're, whether you're coaching youth, middle school, and especially high school. Uh, because it's not a far throw. It's not very, very hard to teach. You don't, it doesn't require your quarterback to have a real strong arm. It doesn't have a lot of reads to it since it is quick game. You're basically reading an area of the field. And if that player vacates, then another receiver is moving into that space. So it's very, very easy to teach and all levels can get it. So I've, I've taught it and I've coached it at the, at the youth level, the middle school level, and now at high school level, we still have it in the playbook, and it's very, very viable, especially when you're getting defenses where you can take advantage of that space right behind or right in front of or in the flats. You can tag different routes to it to take advantage of the space where the defense is not. Uh, you can take advantage of where safeties are not or safeties vacate the area of the field. You can tag different routes to both inside and outside receivers. So it's very, very useful. I'm going to show it to you out of multiple formations. I'm going to show it to you out of three by one. So stick around and we're going to get into the diagrams right now. The way I was taught how to read this or how to teach this concept is kind of how I'm going to teach it to you. I mean, obviously I was not the creator of this. I'm not going to take any credit for it, but I'm going to show you how I was taught how to run this concept. So typically teach it, read short side to wide side. Okay. I understand I have it drawn up in the middle of the field here. Middle of the field, my opinion would be quarterback picks a side, which side is more advantageous for you to run this concept. So essentially what we are trying to do, and I'm just going to highlight the areas of the space where we are trying to take advantage of. We're trying to take advantage of a space there, here, there. Oh, not there. And there. Essentially is what we're trying to grab. Are those four windows? Those four windows is what we are trying to grab. And again, your teacher quarterback, don't read defenders, read areas of space, read grass. If a 
uh, defender with another color jersey is in that window, and that window is closed. Um, we eventually can tag areas down the field, uh, but that's not in the base teaching of the concept. So I'm going to lay out what we talk about and what what routes we're running here. But essentially what we are trying to take advantage of, and a lot of quick games are basically the same, you are trying to take advantage of these uh, overhang defenders right here and to make them wrong and throw into the space and where they're not. Routes are pretty simple. It's about a two-step slant for the outside receivers. So they're running about two-step slants. Our inside, our slot receivers, they are on flat routes or shoot routes, whatever you want to call them, however you want to coach. I like to coach as, as flat routes, so they take basically just one step up and then it's right down the line. So again, they are moving into those areas of – of space where a defender is not, especially if you have corners that are kind of off coverage here. And so again, we are trying to take advantage of these ape or these apex or overhang defenders. And what do they do? And so we tell the receivers that if this defender, for example, widens out, then your route, you just, you essentially just, Settle up in that space. Again, if that defender widens out, we'll move him. He widens out and chases chases the flat route. Then this receiver just breaks off his route and settles up in that space. Otherwise, if it's man, they keep on going and they just keep on running. And so, again, with that crossing uh, pattern, the way the, uh, the receivers cross and man – that's going to rub somebody open, whether it's in the flats here or in this space here, uh, whichever receiver runs open. So the read would be if we were going from short side, again, reading the start side. So let's pretend that the ball is on the left hash here, short side here. So it would be slant, slant, and then shoot to the wide side. So the running back is, you know, I know it's uncharacteristic for me, Running back, it's typically a pass pro, a little extra pass protection here. Now, you can throw him out on a swing if you want. You can tag it to it. You can also tag it and create another slant shoot. Essentially, what I'm going to show you out of a three-by-one set, but this is how I read it. And again, just trying to take advantage of the apex defender and what he does. So again, trying to make this player wrong. What does he do? Does he stay wide or does he stay in his normal zone? If that's the case, quarterback just turns and throws it out to the flats. If not, and he chases that flat to uh, to the flats, <laughs> then that space right here is opened up um, where he vacates. And then that receiver can just know, I need to settle in that space and show hands basically like almost like a snag play. Um, or a stick route if they run the stick route. Um, so very, very easy to teach. Quarterback, again, reads slant, slant, flat, okay, um, from short side to wide side. Now, if it's the middle of the field, I typically have the quarterback just pick a side, and so he would still say, okay, I'm going to read this side first, so it still would be the same. Slant, slant, and then he would follow along. So whatever side he reads first, if he takes that slant, then he's going to go to slant, and then that would be that opposite side shoot. Okay, so this is out of a basic two-by-two two set or ace formation here, and this is how we would teach it um, out of this kind of a set. If you are a team that has an offensive package where you have a sniffer or an H-back type of, of tight end player, you can still run this, and it's still the same. The only difference is it just brings that, that overhang defender in a little bit if he's responsible for covering that – slot receiver or that that next receiver off the line so again it's still the same concept you still have your slants on the outside your flat route here you still have your slant now and then the flat route out here so you're still essentially reading it the same way um, this read would be a little bit easier to make because you have all that space created by the formation to have that read open up much faster. And nine times out of 10, I would say 
if you got this kind of a look, then the quarterback was going to see that that flat route is open almost nine times out of 10 immediately. If this corner, if this corner, however, does not sit down on this like that, if that corner does sit, then you do have that space to hit the slant because if he flies down to try and take that flat, the space in behind the corner right there is where you could hit the slant. So it's again, very, very easy to teach this out of a, out of a set like this where that with a sniffer or H back, but it's a great, great quick game to install into your offense, whether you're using these kind of formations or even if you're using some sort of wing T formation, I'm going to show it to you out of a double tight set here right now. And here is an example of it. If you have like more of like a two tight or more two H back type set here, you can still run this play. It's still great. Now, essentially, as you can see, just based on the diagram here, the space that's already created by just bringing these players more to the inside, more than likely those defenders, those apex defenders, or those, those uh, overhang defenders are going to walk in, which is then just going to open up that window, make it a little bit wider. Um, so the receivers, again, nothing changes. You still have your two-step slants. And the tight ends or sniffer backs here. They have their flats. And it just opens up that much more. It just opens up that much more. Again, you still read it the same way. You're still reading that defender. Does he widen out? If he widens out, then the slants open behind it. If he stays... And the flat route nine times out of 10 is wide open as well. Now, what I'm going to show you next is three by one, a little bit, a uh, little bit more, uh, it, I don't want to say advanced, but a little bit more complex in the ways that I go about doing it. Um, but I'm, then I'm going to also break in some tags that you could show to uh, your players as well. And again, this is more stuff. If you, if you see something you can take advantage of, then do it. I have a base three by one set. This is how I would tip, typically teach this out of a three by one set. So you got your inside guy running a flat where it changes here is I like to put my most outside guy in a little bit deeper of a slant. So he's, he's climbing to about five yards, which is typically about three steps. And then he's slanting across the middle. He's aiming for the middle field. So it almost kind of te technically turns into a post, um, so, and then this inside guy, he's one or two steps and then he's slant underneath. So you almost have a level slant here. So again, nothing really changes as far as the read. You are still trying to read that overhang defender. And what window opens up first? Can you hit the inside or the, the shorter leveled slant or the the mid-level slant and then again is that flat open a lot of times what a defense will do too is obviously shift their protection not protection but coverage over here they'll probably shift the linebacker down here too so the window does cloud up a little bit here so you, um a lot of times that middle linebacker or that next linebacker that's there will have the ability to kind of step into that window if need be but then also that slant that goes over the top, is it open right behind where that linebacker winds out? So again, still that window, again, if that quarterback is reading that window right there, he can see that there's two different colored jerseys in that window. What do they do? So again, he's not necessarily reading the players. He's reading the grass. So if that grass vacates open, then he throws the ball in there and he can tell which ones will be open based on which uh, direction these defenders go. So again, if this defender right here really, really widens out to take that flat and he widens out, then a lot of times, nine times out of 10, that deeper slant is going to be open over the middle. So again, read that window, read that window. Again, have that strong side, talked about the concept on that side. But there's a way that I like to also do creating that slant flat concept out of a three by one to the single receiver side. So it's something I like because again, on our backside, typically what I teach is a backside slant, always running a backside slant unless it's tagged otherwise. So again, that wouldn't change. So this receiver is going to run a backside slant. But what I like to do as well to create that if I want to create that slant flat on the backside, especially if we get kind of this kind of look here where there's a 
ton of space over here. And really we're only contending at the moment with one defender in the corner. Then what we can do is send F on a fast motion, almost tear motion here. And then he is setting up in the flats right here. And essentially now, again, if this defender runs with him, that's fine. He can run with him because then the slant is coming behind it. So we create essentially create that slant flat concept out of a three by one, just by using that tear motion or push motion, whatever you want to call it out of the backfield. It's one thing I like to do, especially if we get this kind of look. So this is more of a tag um, that you can add to it, especially if you get this kind of look. And again, these tags, use them, don't use them. It, it doesn't really matter, but it's good ways to take advantage of the space the defense is giving you based on their alignment. So this is something that I would do. If I saw this kind of alignment, I would essentially call the same quick game and say, you know, what? we have this space open here. We can run a quick slant flat concept out here just by putting the running back in, in very, very fast motion and getting them to the outside. So that's a one way I like to do it. I have a three by one. Otherwise he's typically in a pass pro. So there's multiple ways you can do it. I'm also going to show you a couple tags out of a two by two set that we a couple little tags that I like to use here that a bunch of other coaches use as well. Uh, especially if you're seeing some sort of man defense here. Um, I'm going to move these corners down here, but We'll talk about the outside receiver or the, the inside receivers here. So they have their shoot or their, their flat routes here, but if we're getting strong man coverage here. A lot of times what I like to do and other coaches do like to do is to put them up on the wheel. So they're going straight up the sideline. And so have the wheel and we're going up the sideline. This is up the sideline right there. So we can tag that off. And so they're going up the field on wheel routes. And so again, if we see on the out or the outside here, strong man, especially against a one high, I like to do the slant and goes. So they're up the field here, up basically up the hashes here. And essentially what we can do is basically take advantage of that single high safety right there. And we can make a big play out of this, especially if we see something we can take advantage of. Um, and we see that space. Basically, we're trying to watch what these players are doing to see what, what we can take advantage of out of the base concept that we taught. So can we tag something like this? If not, don't need to use it. And just keep calling the same play over and over and over again until they stop. That That's the name of the game, whether you're calling this play or another play. You keep calling that play until they stop it. And again, it's just about reading grass, reading space. Just to show you the quick, simple little progression of how it should look technically, um, we're going to run slant flat. I'm just going to show it to you to this area of the field again, trying to take advantage of this defender right here. Um, if his responsibilities are to follow along with that slot receiver, then he's going to widen out and you will see the grass open up behind that defender for the slant. There's the ball. Show it to you one more time. There's the ball. There you have it. It probably turned into a long video. I was trying to keep it short. I apologize for that. Uh, but that's a great quick game that you can add into your playbook, whether you're at the youth, middle school, high school level. Doesn't matter what kind of offense you are running, what kind of formations you use. You can you can use that of any kind of two by two set where it's condensed, where it's spread out. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And also check out this video right here, talking about ways to disguise, uh, disguise your stick concept. If that's a concept they use till then I'll see you in the next video, guys.